Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and in this Luminar Neo tutorial I'm going to show you how you can edit your selfies and portraits with Luminar Neo and take a smartphone selfie such as this and turn it into this. So to begin with I'm just going to revert my photo back to its original state and I chose this photo because it really is a very basic photo like the photo that most of us take every day and it was taken with an iPhone's front facing camera. So we're going to begin with a little bit of portrait bokeh. And what this is going to do is as I dial this in, it's going to begin to blur the background. Now black background blur is important for two main reasons. Uh, first of all, it creates a contrast between me and my background, giving it a sense of pop and three dimensions. And also it removes uh, any background clutter that might distract from uh, myself. Now here the background blur has done a very good job. There is a few little corrections to be made. So what I want to do is fix the edges. I've been a bit aggressively clipped around the edges. I'm also going to change the depth correction, which is going to create even more blur behind me. And the last thing I'm going to do is adjust the white balance on the background so it's a bit cooler. And again, what that does, this is a, entirely a matter of preference. But what it does is, again, it creates just a little bit of contrast from me and the bush behind. Next, I'm going to go into face lighting and portraiture. Everything is about lighting and we don't always get the lighting we want. So here we can just adjust the face light and it will brighten up your features. We also have a few extra features down here. For example, we can whiten our eyes and such. It's great again for correcting bad light. Uh, dark circle remover is a good one as our eyebrows cast shadows below our eyes. And it's also good for those photos where maybe you were just a little bit tired when they were taken. I can improve my eyebrows, but I'm quite happy with the ones my mother gave me. Anyway, skin AI again. Now, a lot of smartphones already have a skin smoothing feature. I recommend you turn it off and use this instead. As you can see, dialed up to the max, it's going to give us a very sort of strange wax like appearance. So what we want to do is have it just above nothing, really. So we just want to move it, take the edges off it a little bit. So you just sort of have a play with that until get the result you want and if you ever want to preview what it looks like before you applied the effect on every tool we've got this little eye feature right here and if we click on that we can kind of bounce between the edited non-edited version of that singular adjustment now the last thing i want to do so we've blurred our background we've sort of polished me up a little bit i'm looking a little bit better lit and a little little less old I suppose. The next thing I would like to do is add a, a, a vignette. So this is where you scroll up your tools uh, and under the essentials option we've got the vignette tool. We're going to click on that and what it does is it effectively simulates using a bad lens whereby this brightness is uneven across the frame. Now we're just going to do this ever so slightly. We don't want to do it a lot. And another nice feature we've got is if we click on choose subject, we can off center the vignette and sort of prioritize the subject in, in this case, me. And then we can kind of just sort of adjust that until we've got exactly the effect that we're looking for. And again, a bit like background blur, the vignette serves us in two ways. Uh, first of all, it diminishes the power of the background over our subject, uh, me. And it gives us that 3D pop, uh, that sense of depth. And that's it. We're finished. So if we go back to the original, we can see how far we've come. Oh, I must have to bounce out of that setting first. So that's what we began with. A good old classic iPhone forward facing front camera selfie. To something which is looking a little bit more pro and print worthy or indeed shareworthy, of course.
Now, just as a bonus, we can do a few more things if you want to. So if we click on plus, we can add an adjustment layer. And here we can do a few little fun effects. So for example, we can add some stardust bokeh. And I'm particularly fond of the uh, light leaks, which give us all kinds of funny effects. So I don't like that one so much. If it is a bit overpowering, we can reduce the opacity and just make it a little bit minor. But anyway, have fun with that. But overall, I'm happy with my good old fashioned, straightforward photo once again, before, after, and really, if you're not talking to a microphone and recording a YouTube video, this will take you about two minutes to do. So this is Luminar Neo. If you've yet to try Luminar Neo, there's a link in the description below and you can try it entirely free. If you want to buy Luminar Neo, uh, please note there's a promo code next to a link below. If you use that link and use the promo code, you'll save a heap of money. Anyway, my name's Richard from Silent Peak. I really hope that was useful and I wish you a great day. Bye-bye.